Coming up on this week's show, we get the scoop on the 2019 Coastal Magic Convention from its director, Jennifer Morris, who also has a great giveaway for us. Welcome to the Big Gay Fiction Podcast, the show for readers and writers of gay romance fiction. If you can read it, write it, watch it, or listen to it, these two guys are going to talk about it. Now, here are your hosts, Jeff Adams and Will Knauss. Welcome, everyone, to episode 144 of the Big Gay Fiction Podcast. I'm Jeff from JeffAdamsWrites.com. And I'm Will from WillKanaus.com. This week's episode is brought to you in part by listeners just like you. We will have more information on how you can help support this show in just a few moments. Welcome back, everyone. We hope you had a fantastic week. Fantastic week filled with uh, reading and relaxing since we are... Uh, knee deep in summer. Indeed, we certainly <laughs> are. Uh, we think it's hot here. It's hot in a lot, so many places in the country. Uh, we should also say, if you know, we hope you, if you were in the U.S., you also had a great Fourth of July celebration. Uh, whether you celebrated with fireworks or with just some good books to read. Speaking of books to read, someone finally, <laughs> after months and months and months, has completed a book. I did. Uh, on Saturday, which is just yesterday, I completed uh, the fourth Codename Winger book. The first draft is done. I have three and a half weeks to edit it and revise it and make it all shiny and happy to turn into the good folks at Harmony Inc. So, happy that's done. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Pop the champagne. Uh, the real work begins. It does. <laughs> and now, yesterday, you also made your way to Sacramento, and you visited our friends at the Lavender Library. I did. Uh, since we first found the library, when we were looking around this area to potentially move, I had the, the thought in the back of my head that it would be a really cool place to potentially volunteer at. And they opened up some volunteer training uh, opportunities this weekend, and I went and got myself trained so I can check out books and intake books and accept donations and all that good stuff. So yeah, I think I plan to do at least a shift a month there uh, and see how that goes and how it fits into my time schedule because I think it'd be really great. I've always had this idea of wanting to work at a bookstore. So this is almost the next best thing, working at a library surrounded by a bunch of wonderful uh, LGBT literature. So yeah, looking forward to that. Uh, we should tease the giveaway a little bit more. Um, Tell awesome people what's coming. Uh, this week, we have a fantastic interview, first and foremost, with Jennifer Morris of the Coastal Magic Convention. Uh, she gives us the down and the low about what the convention is all about. Also, she has a pretty spectacular giveaway concerning said convention. So please stay tuned. There's lots of great stuff coming your way. Teenage secret agent Theo Reese is back in action in Schooled, the second book in the Codename Winger series. Theo's high school computer science club is gearing up for a competition, and he agrees to lend his knowledge of cybersecurity to help them win. The covert agency he secretly works for also needs his talents when an encrypted key that allows access to the nation's electrical grid has been stolen. The file shows up at the competition as one of those to be decoded. Theo must find a way to be both an average high school student and TOS agent winger. The file must be secured, all while protecting his teammates from those who will use any means necessary to get the file for themselves. Schooled is available in ebook and paperback wherever books are sold. And if you missed Theo's first mission, pick up Tracker Hacker today. So even while I was finishing a book this week, uh, I did uh, do a couple of audiobooks uh, that were on the shorter side. Uh, Claire London, who we adore, uh, has issued a box set, uh, both ebook and audio, uh, for the series of With a Kick books uh, that she writes. These are adorable books uh, that are set in and around an ice cream shop uh, in London. And the With a Kick collection number one uh, also features one of our favorite narrators with Joel Leslie. Joel loves to do the accents, and boy, did Claire stock him up on accents in this one. I don't think he gets to do an American accent for even a single second in this book, uh, because, of course, they're set in London, so you have a lot of London accents. 
Uh, one of the gentlemen is Turkish and has a Turkish family, so he gets to do a little bit of that accent. It is a it is an accent palooza for Joel. Uh, there are two, actually there's four stories in this book that can turn two couples. Uh, first up is A Twist and Two Balls, uh, which features struggling actor Eduardo Mancini and taxi cab driver Nuri. Uh, Eduardo is late for an audition and hops in a cab and as he's in there, he realizes he doesn't have enough money to actually complete the trip. Uh, so he hops out hoping he's got enough to get where he has sort of gotten to in the journey, but he does not. And Nuri is having none of that. Uh, Eduardo tries to get away after Kent not seeming to be able to talk himself out of it. And of course ends up at with a kick. Uh, and the two kind of argue there over the money and eventually it kind of settles out. But Nuri has also taken Eduardo into his heart a little bit, realizing that this man is struggling uh, offers to buy him dinner, get him home. Um, it's really charming how Nuri goes from angry cab driver to this more, I need to help this man uh, who is a little freaked out that he's not uh, getting to the audition that he wants to get to. And as we learn more about these two, uh, they have a lot in common. Uh, they're both not 100% doing what they want to do. Uh, Eddie... Eduardo, or Eddie, as his real name is, he, he picked Eduardo Mancini because he felt it was more ethnic and might get him more roles because it made him exotic instead of just Eddie March. Um, he is an actor who has stage fright and can rehearse great, but then when it's time to be in front of the camera or on the stage, he totally freaks out and then can't do it. Um, turns out that uh, Nuri is an attorney but is driving a taxi because it's more flexible hours so that he can help out his large family. And as these two find out more about each other in Claire's way, Claire has this way of bringing her couples together that is so endearing that as they just kind of find their way to each other and get all squishy with each other, and even her angsty moments aren't too angsty, which I, I like a lot. Um, I love these two. These two were so good. Um, and how they kind of helped each other to realize how they could be better and do what they wanted to do and still be flexible along the way. And that also helped them find the ability to come together and love each other because neither of them were really looking for boyfriends in this moment either because they were trying so hard to make their, their livelihoods come together and to support the people they needed to. So Twisted Two Balls, loved it. Um, and uh, the second story is Slap and Tickle. And here, as you might guess from the title, we get a little bit of BDSM action uh, going on here. Very, very light stuff in that area. Uh, we find accountant Brian, who, as you know, the stereotypical accountant, likes everything just so. Everything has its order and its way it needs to be, and he wants he wants order and calm around him. And uh, one day, he literally runs into Fizz outside of with a kick. Uh, Fizz is everything opposite of Brian. He's He's flighty, he talks a lot, he, he, his speech patterns aren't uh, cohesive as Brian would like them to be. Um, but these two churn from the chaos comes an initial friendship. Um, and then uh, Claire once again brings these two seemingly polar opposite people uh, together. And one of the things they end up in kind of bond over uh, because Fizz was handing out... Um, flyers to a, uh, a leather club uh, that offered some uh, light slap and tickle uh, that uh, Brian kind of likes that and Fizz kind of wanted to be on the receiving end of that. And that just kind of brought the two together all the more. Um, I couldn't quite decide what little subgenre this was. Certainly Twist and Two Balls was enemies to friends to lovers. Uh, I couldn't figure this one out as much, but I loved it. I especially loved Fizz because he is, he gets excited and then he's excitable and then he just talks a mile a minute and, and Brian's like, calm down. <laughs> um, the other two stories in this are actually Christmas stories that feature uh, Eddie and Nuri and then uh, Brian and Fizz. I especially liked uh, Eddie and Nuri's Christmas story. Um 
they each, it, it was a little mystical in the snowiness um, and with the Santa Clauses. Uh, Nuri may or may not have given a cab ride to the actual Santa Claus whose sled may or may not have broken down uh, somewhere in London. So it was just a nice little magical Christmas story there, and I liked it a lot. Uh, kudos to Claire for coming up with such a wonderful universe around the ice cream shop, and to Joel for voicing uh wonderful characters and totally giving us a uh, a joel leslie uh, accent palooza so pick up the with a kick collection uh oh number one that's what the cover looks like even though that's one of the paperbacks uh in audio and ebook uh we'll put links to that in the show notes of course i i spent actually my entire audiobook uh time over in uh Europe this week. Uh, the other book that I did is one of Dream Spinner's uh, World of Love uh, novels. Uh, this one was called Hearts in Ireland, and it's by J.C. Long, uh, a new-to-me author, and also here a new-to-me narrator with John Steinkamp. I adored this book totally. Uh, it's set in Ireland, which is a place that I would like to go and see the rolling green hills and visit that culture with J.C. Uh, Really does a great job in making a character in this book, as you're supposed to with these uh, World of Love and States of Love books. Um, it takes place partially in a bookstore, and one of its love interests actually works in said bookstore. And as I mentioned, <laughs> even at the top of the show, I have a, I'm enamored with bookstores. And uh, we've got a nice love story set here as well, which I liked. Uh, as the story opens, we meet uh, Ronan, who lives in Atlanta. Uh, he's at a bit of a crossroads because his mother has just passed away after an illness. Uh, his mother is from Ireland and met his father while his father was stationed over in that part of the world uh, while he was in the military. Um, his mom always wanted Ronan to go to Ireland and, and see you know, her family and her heritage and that part of the world. And after, his, after she passes... Uh, he goes through a time of, of major grieving where he doesn't really get off his couch for a couple of weeks. Uh, but his dad kind of prods him into getting his life together, and he decides to go to Ireland. Uh, as soon as he comes off that plane, he is just so happy to be there and feels a little sense of home. Um, he, he learns about his extended family. He ends up working at the bookshop a little bit just to help out uh, while he's staying there. And there he meets Fergal. Uh, who is another one of the bookshop employees. Uh, they bond so quickly. Neither of them likes uh, Kindles. They don't like ebooks. Uh, they really like actual physical books. And uh, that begins their friendship. And Fergal takes him around to different places. They go camping. Um, and while they're camping, uh, they really can't get past anymore that there's more than just a friendship there. But Ronan is extremely... Uh, Hesitant, of course, to to commit to that because he's going back home. He's not due to stay in Ireland for an extended period of time. But uh, he comes back to his his father and mother, uh, who you know met while his dad was there for a short time, and then she took the leap to move to the states with him, even very early in their relationship. And that's kind of the catalyst that lets them uh, move forward in the relationship. Um, this book, I have to say, also made me think a lot about my mom as well for some, just because of those, all the connections on the passing and stuff and that the whole thing, it was just, uh, I think the book actually read under five hours. Um, the whole thing was just like one being cuddled up in a warm blankie. Um, I loved it to pieces. I, I would like to read some more J.C. Long. John Steinkamp was a great narrator here handling uh, the Irish accents, along with a number of American acts, uh, American uh, characters as well. So that was very enjoyable. Uh, Hearts in Ireland. Pick that one up uh, if you want to read a, a lovely uh, romance set in Ireland. So the last book on my list this week is Maiden Voyage which is the latest book from the uh, Promised Land crew. We loved that children's book when it came out last year. Uh, this one uh, has two young women at its focus. Uh, Rue finds out from her father, just as he's passing away, that uh, she's actually a princess and has a, a life that she doesn't really know about. Uh, she, he gives her a dagger and tells her that it will take her on an adventure, which it certainly does. 
she, in short order, finds a map in that dagger and needs a crew in a, in a scene that, for some reason, just made me think of uh, Luke Skywalker going off to find Han Solo. But in this case, Rue gets to find Captain Freya, uh, who happens to be from the very place that the map is going to lead them. Uh, she tells Rue that this is not the place she necessarily wants to go because it's ruled by an evil queen uh, who has powers to uh, bring people under her control. But nonetheless, they go to this place and uh, uh, ca ca ugh, Freya has this cat, by the way, who is the navigator. I found the cat to be totally adorable because he does guide the way, pointing the way with his tail on where they need to go, uh, which was ever so cute. Uh, of course, they get there, and as all fairy tales happen, uh, Rue and Freya save the day. Uh, they get Rue's mother out of uh, captivity, and uh, all is happy as these two fall in love and essentially sail away under the stars. Um, as with Promised Land, this is a delightful book. Um, if you've got children, they will certainly uh, enjoy this story, and it's great to see that the 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 creators of the story have uh, now brought to a princess and a pirate together, uh, which was delightful. Uh, Maiden Voyage is available now, and we will link up to that in the show notes so that you can go get your own copy, uh, either in hardback or paperback, wherever books are sold. Fantastic. Now, you're back into the reading mode also. Mm -hmm. uh, for the first time in quite a while, I got the chance to enjoy a wonderful cozy feel-good romance um i took the plunge and started a book by rosalind abel i've had several of rosalind abel's books on my tbr pile for quite some time uh, i'm very glad that i took the plunge i listened to the audiobook this week it is read by kurt graves friend of the show um this is the first time i've read uh, listened to a kurt graves book uh, mm. and he is just as remarkable as everyone has said <laughs> Uh, he does a wonderful job um, narrating this particular book. So, quickly, what is the book all about? Well, I will tell you. It is the first in the Lavender Shores series, set in the beautiful, picturesque coastal town of Lavender Shores. Um, this particular book is called The Palisade. So, The Palisade is about Joel. Joel is essentially the heir to a coffee empire, and he's been sent by his father to Lavender Shores, uh, to sort of scout for a location of their newest, like, boutique coffee emporium. Like, upscale shishi kind of a thing. Fancy. Um, they're Because they're branching out. And, uh, uh, that's, uh, that's crazy. <laughs> anyway, so, so Joel comes to town, and on the night before he starts looking for locations, he runs into nice guy Andrew. Uh, Andrew's family have been longtime residents of a lavender shores and um he's at a, a party with his family uh and he catches joel's eye who's you know, like sitting at the bar and they kind of meet and they say hi and they end up hooking up because they are both so incredibly hot for each other they just can't stand it <laughs> um so they spend the night together uh in, in joel's hotel room and uh it's essentially love at first sight what this story manages to do is in a incredibly um, short period of time, really just a few days, as we are taking on the emotional journey of these two characters, and they do genuinely do fall in love. Um, for those readers who bitch and moan about insta love, um, you haven't read this book, and <laughs> um, once you do, you will get it. Um, so okay, so the next morning after they've hooked up. Uh, Joel goes to the local real estate office, and what do you know? Andrew is there. He he works there. Uh, so Andrew has to, like, uh, take him around town, shows him a couple of locations. Uh, Lavender Shores, besides being a magical place, it uh, has also some very unique restrictions because it is surrounded on all sides, either by uh, the coast or or a national park, um, the Lavender Shores, uh, what's what's the, oh crap. Like the footprint of the town? The footprint of the town cannot grow. Ooh, okay. It is locked in. 
because it's surrounded on all sides. So there are very specific zoning laws and rules and all sorts of like crazy small town stuff that you have to deal with. Um, <laughs> one of the rules being is that there can only be one type of each business in town. There is already a coffee shop. Uh -oh. And this throws a big old wrench into Joel's plans. So, um, <laughs> so he goes, goes uh, looking at these different locations in town with Andrew anyway, because he wants to spend time with him and get to know him. And he's like trying to figure out what he's going to say to his dad and how he's going to tackle this little uh, bump in the business road that he's encountered. Um, eventually, uh, Andrew shows Joel this beautiful beachside cottage, thinking that it's possible that it could be a location for whatever business Joel wants to eventually open in the shores. And... Um, Joel keeps going along with it. He he doesn't necessarily explain that he's the heir to a you know uh, coffee empire, sure, um, and that he wants to open this chain store in this lovely bucolic town. And um, when he finds this lovely little cottage, it's sort of it's magical, and it really gets. Joel thinking about what his priorities are. Uh, he's not happy at all with working for the company. Uh, he's certainly not happy with his father. His father's an absolute asshole. Um, <laughs> but Joel does feel some sort of familial duty. And uh, so opening this location is supposed to be his first priority. But all he can think about is... Andrew and starting this life in this quiet town. Eventually, it comes out that um, Joel has, you know, been, I'm using quotes, stringing him along <laughs> and uh, is only using him to try and get to uh, some of the founding family members of the town in order to, like, swing him some exceptions so he can open this coffee store. Uh, things don't go well. There's a whole big blow up and poor, poor uh, Joel has to go back to San Francisco with his tail between his legs. Uh, he didn't get the coffee store and he didn't get the man that he wanted. Um, eventually, both Joel and Andrew come to their senses and realize that life is just not living without one another. Uh, Andrew um, buys the cottage uh, next to the shoreline and they decide to start their life together. Um, this is a um, an incredibly long, pathetic, and rambling explanation of what the story is about. I, it doesn't even begin to capture how much I adored this book uh, and this couple. I am so glad that I finally decided to dive in to this particular series by this particular author. Um, what this book does and what I didn't manage to convey in my long and rambling review is is that not only is this book incredibly sweet playing off some classic genre uh, contemporary romance tropes, it's also incredibly sexy. Um, the, the chemistry between Joel and Andrew is explosive and um, it's, you know, incredibly obvious why they would fall in love in such a short period of time. Uh, I have already moved on to the second book in the series, so I highly recommend, uh, if you have not given Rosalind Abel a try, you check out The Palisade, which is the first book in the Lavender Shores series. Yeah, I'll certainly be doing that. You raved about it all week as you were kind of reading along on it, so it is near the top of my TBR now as well. Uh, you, of course, can check out the show notes to pick up any of the books that we've mentioned in this episode. Supporting us through our affiliate links, if you click on any of those, helps put a few pennies into the podcast coffers. How else can people help the podcast out? Well, you can help support the Big Gay Fiction Podcast with a monthly pledge through Patreon. For as little as 25 cents an episode, your pledge helps pay for the cost of producing and distributing this very show. Now, for fans who pledge at the silver and gold levels, you'll have exclusive opportunity to ask questions of our upcoming guests. You'll also have access to the special bonus episodes that we do every single 
month. Now, you can get more information on how you can help support this show at patreon.com slash biggayfictionpodcast. That is p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash biggayfictionpodcast. Want to hang out with us between shows? Check us out on Facebook. You never know what we might post. News about book sales, bonus video content, and maybe even a live broadcast or two. Like us today at facebook.com slash biggayfictionpodcast and see what we get up to next. Now, we mentioned last week that uh, the Coastal Magic Convention was coming up. We talked a little bit about some of the LGBT authors that are going to be there as well as the fact that registration is open. This week, we get even more details on Coastal Magic. Uh, We got the opportunity to speak with its director, Jennifer Morris. Uh, I adored speaking with her. She is a lovely woman. She undertakes this entire convention pretty much on her own, which is a massive undertaking. Uh, And I'm more excited than ever to get to go to to the to, to the magic in February. <laughs> <laughs> Take me to the magic. <laughs> Take me to the magic. I can't wait either. Uh, so here, we're going to give you the uh, the interview now. Do take a close listen because we get the download on what her uh, giveaway is too, and we'll talk more about that afterwards. We're excited to welcome the director of the Coastal Magic Convention, Jennifer Morris, to the podcast. Coastal Magic is a super casual urban fantasy, paranormal, and romance-focused author-reader weekend in Daytona Beach, Florida, and Jennifer is the driving force behind that event. Welcome to the podcast. Hello there. How are you? We are good. It's awesome to have you here. We're super excited that we finally get to go to this con in 2019. Uh, We've heard so many awesome things about it from fellow readers, from fellow bloggers, from authors, and... We're psyched to that get there finally. That makes me very happy. <laughs> that makes me very happy. Now, you just made the author announcement and the and the uh, registration opened up just, I think it was it was last week from when this Saturday, podcast is yeah. dropping. Mm-hmm. What do we have to look forward to for 2019? Give us the scoop. Okay, so um, we kind of try to have a formula where we have about half of our authors returning and half new authors um, that have not been with us before, or maybe have was were with us a few years ago, but have you know been away for a little while, and so we're kind of running right on that that same percentage. I'm I'm happy with the split, so you'll see quite a few people that have been with us before, and then a lot of new faces, which will be a lot of fun. Um, we're kind of playing a little bit with the schedule for this year. Um, if for people that have been to Coastal Magic before, um, we've kind of had um, a set evening type activity schedule thing that we did that people are really familiar with. Um, but there were some, some comments about um, the amount of time that people have to like sit down and chill out and talk in the evening. Um, that's built into the daytime, but in the evening we have these party things going on and you know, there, there wasn't as much easily available time for people to kind of sit and chill out. So we're kind of rearranging some of the evening scheduling. So that'll be fun. Um, the big thing that I'm excited about is that Mardi Gras starts during our Coastal Magic Weekend. So we're going to play a little bit with that. So there'll be a lot of purple and green and gold going on that weekend. Nice. What do you think it is that really has drawn such a loyal fan base of authors and readers over the years to this particular gathering? Um, as funny as it is, I think the, the idea that we're kind of middle of the road which normally when you hear that phrase, it's not intended to be a good thing. Um, but, but we kind of, we mash up um, having a lot for people to do so that they stay busy and stay excited and stay engaged um, with really giving people a lot of time to just chill out, um, have some downtime, goof off with friends, you know, talk to some readers and authors that they don't know. There's, there's a real good mix of, um, if for people that want to stay busy, you can do that. If you really want to just chill out, you can do that too. Um, and I think we balance that out really well. And um, everybody just kind of, with so many people that come back every year, it's really kind of uh, almost like a family reunion. Um, so uh, if there's a lot of hugging and a lot of, oh my gosh, how are you doing? And, and it's not just, I mean, it's definitely book talk for sure, but there's a lot of people that, you know, become friends with each other and be, you know, stay involved with each other throughout the year, not just at the convention. So you're talking about family things and 
vacations that they went on and all kinds of stuff. So it's it's really it really does turn into kind of like a, a just an extended family va- re- reunion, which is a lot of fun. And the new people just kind of fit right in. It's not like anybody gets excluded because they haven't been there for six years. Everybody just kind of filters in together, and it's 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 really cool. I like the community um, that we've kind of become, which is a lot of fun. Yeah, Jeff and I have been talking about coastal magic um, on the podcast for off and on for several years now, and we're and like Jeff said, we're super excited that 2019 is finally going to be our year. But I'm very for, happy about for, that. for those of our listeners who um, this is their first time hearing about coastal magic, can you give them sort of a rough idea of what the weekend is all about? Um, okay, so basically, we are going to have um, discussion panels mm-hmm. um, a lot. And w- one thing that's fun about the discussion panels is that the the panel itself lasts for an hour, but there are a lot of times that I'll hear about conversations that started during the discussion panel that people are still having the rest of the weekend, mm-hmm. which is a lot of fun for me. That's that's cool because it it shows how engaged people are with it and how they're thinking about what's going on. Sometimes it's, you know, really... Um, oddball stuff like last year we had a panel on um, the uh, pets authors pets (laughs) because cats and dogs are abounding in authors lives Um, so we had a we had a panel about authors and their pets which is ridiculous and also amazing Um, (laughs) but then we also have stuff like world building and you know villains and all that kind of stuff where it's not really author workshops because we don't really focus too much on the craft itself but, but readers are interested in how authors come up with different world building techniques or how they create characters that, you know, have certain dynamics. So we kind of balance it with, with those kind of things. Um, so the panels, I, I'm a panel girl. I love going to panels when I go to events. So that's important to me to be able to have those options for people. Uh, we've also got some um, author hosted activities that'll be mixed in with the panels. We'll have meet and greets. Um, our welcome mingle on Thursday night. That's one of the things that's actually changing. Um, we have done our party night um, kind of on Friday night, um, but we're changing it to Thursday night this year and making that party our welcome mingle and kind of toning it down a little bit so that people can have a chance to sit down. They can look through their bag of goodies that they get when they come in, meet up with people they know are going to be there for the weekend. Uh, maybe wander around, introduce themselves to different authors that might be there. So it's going to be a little bit more chill than usual. And on that first night, give people a chance to kind of really, you know, start out the week making making new connections. Um, let's see, we'll have a lunch with an author on Saturday, which is a lot of fun. People get to pick an author that they want to sit with. Each author is going to have um, four people that are kind of their little group, um, and we'll group multiple authors sometimes at the same table so you never know who you might end up with um and and it's a nice time for people to to really just settle down chill out not worry about promo not worry about anything else and just chit chat and i think i think people really enjoy that that's one of my favorite things about the weekend um and we will have a scavenger hunt we'll have all kinds of goofy stuff going on it's it's a little bit of everything. Scavenger hunt. That sounds fun. <laughs> I like scavenger hunts. And and on top of everything, the convention happens uh, essentially in the dead of winter in Florida. So I yes, think right on not beach. only do you get to like enjoy and talk about books, you get to escape the frozen, especially well. I think everywhere has been a frozen tundra lately. The last couple yeah. of years, winters have been pretty. Dire. Right. So I can't wait. This sounds so amazing. Yeah. We, we had people laying out on the beach last year, this, this year, this February. Sounds yeah. fantastic. Yeah. That's going to be crazy to be able to lay out in February. <laughs> it wait. happens. It happens. Now, we've talked about this coming year. Give us, give us the con's origin story. How, how did this all start? Okay. So basically, I was being a whiny butt on Twitter. <laughs> that, that's essentially how Coastal Magic began. Um, I had a book blog many years before I ever started Coastal Magic. And so I was very lucky. I got to meet um, quite a few authors online and a few at some, some events um, and was very active with my book blog. So I'd gotten to be friendly with a lot of authors. So I was very lucky in that I had a lot of connections that way. 
And I was on Twitter, um, very upset <laughs> because there was a group of authors that were doing a, a tour launching each one of these authors had a new book coming out. And so their publisher was sending them on tour. They were starting in New York and they were moving down through the East coast. They get to Atlanta and then they went West. And I'm like, sometimes people in Florida read, it would be really <laughs> great if you would come down here. <laughs> and and I, I get it. I know the marketing and I know that they plan these things out and you know, all of that. And it's, it's not their fault. And I wasn't berating any of them. I was just upset because they weren't coming near me. And so I'm, I'm whining on Twitter, as you do. And um, one of my author friends, um, James R. Tuck, who is an amazing urban fantasy author. He does a lot of like crime noir and, and borderline horror, which is really cool. Um, in any case, he, he was like, quit whining and just give them a reason to come to Florida. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, and he's like, make an event, create something. I was like, you don't just make an event. That's not how these things work. And he's like, well, that's exactly how these things work. <laughs> um, and so I kind of just didn't bother about it for a while. And then like a week later, he's like, did you make something yet? And I'm like, uh, no. And so he bugged me for a couple of weeks. And eventually I was like, okay, let's, let's see what happens. So I emailed, I want to say maybe 20 to 30 authors that lived kind of close to my area within a few states and said, you know, if I put together this little thing, would you come? Would you come and do this signing and, you know, maybe do a couple panels? And I ended up that first year with, I want to say, almost 50 authors from all over the U.S. And we had almost 200 people. So that was not what I was expecting, but very cool. Um, I had absolutely no idea what I was doing, but it was so much fun. <laughs> um, we've got some stories people that were with me that first year it was originally um called old city new blood um because we were in saint augustine and it was amazing saint augustine was a fantastic place for the event um, the problem with saint augustine is that it was not built for big events saint augustine is a very small little town intended for very small little things um, and there just wasn't room for us so when we moved to date to um to daytona we switched around the title, and so from second year on, we've been Coastal Magic. Um, and that's that's kind of how we've gone. And between the book blog and going to other events, I've managed to, you know, meet some new authors. And luckily, they trust me to not screw this up. <laughs> so here we are with year seven. What's been your secret to keeping this going? I mean, because we've seen other cons kind of rise and fall. Uh, how do you manage to keep it going, especially for you? Because it's, it's just mostly a one-woman show. I, I have some friends that are amazing at motivation and helping me. But I am also very much, um, I, I don't know that I would necessarily say control freak. I'm very particular about how I want things done. Um, and so if someone else... Okay, so maybe I am a control freak. If somebody else can do it the way I want them to do it, then that's fine. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll do it myself. Um, it is it is pretty much a one-woman show for the most part. Um, but like I said, I, I have some amazing people that help me um, when it really counts. And that, that makes a big difference. And like you guys, the bloggers, there's no way I could do stuff without the bloggers. Um, between the help that I get from bloggers at the event itself and then the promo leading up to it. I have a decent network. I have, like I said, I have a lot of connections with authors that I'm very friendly with and I'm very lucky to have that. But my reach only goes so far. Mm -hmm. So between the bloggers and the friends that I have and, you know, just kind of beaten feet, um, promo is not my favorite thing to do. I'm not particularly exceptional at it. Um, I do okay. Obviously, I do all right, but I can certainly do better and I can certainly learn more. And that's always kind of on my list of things to do. I'm always looking for, for new ways to, to get the word out. So, you know, every year will get a little better and, and reach a few more people. Um, as far as what makes it work, um, I don't know that there's really any secret formula. I don't know enough about the events that didn't make it to figure out what I'm doing differently. Um, Hopefully, uh, we'll continue to do it. Uh, we'll continue to make it. I know that, again, I'm just very particular about how, basically, I'm doing the event that I would want to go to. 
Mm -hmm. So if it's something that I think I would enjoy, then I want to try to find a way to incorporate it because I figure somebody else must want this too. Um, and for the most part, it's kind of worked that way. So I, I, I'm guessing that that's, that's what works. I, I don't know. I wish that I knew some secret formula that I could share, but it's really just me being picky, I think, more than anything else. <laughs> Do you get the opportunity to enjoy the weekend you've created? Not as much as I would like, and that's actually one of my goals. I, I, I figure I still have things to learn and things to improve upon and things to make more efficient until I can finally go to my event. <laughs> I'm there, and there are times that I get to pop in and see things. Like mm -hmm. I'll, I've seen the Cinema Craptastique every year, and I, you know, I pop into different things here and there, especially. I would like to go to all the panels. I would like to moderate all of the panels. Um, so it, I will tr I will usually pick one or two that I'll try to get into and, and at least see some of. Um, but my goal is to actually attend my event. <laughs> so we'll see. I think that's, that's a good goal. <laughs> maybe, maybe that'll be this year. And I guess kind of connected to that, I mean, what keeps you coming back year after year to keep this going since it is all you? I... I like I like to see people get as excited about it as I am. I like to see people get excited about the authors. I like to see people get excited when they, um, during the weekend, get to talk to people, um, get to meet up with people that they know online but have never had, you know, been able to see face to face. Um, I like the excitement of it all. I like the connections that people make. Um, it's it's a boatload of work and it's not always fun but that weekend definitely makes up for it that's awesome mm -hmm. what, what people potentially may not know who attend is that unlike some cons where the authors have this mad dash to register to get in <laughs> the invites are all you how do you decide who you want to have come and and kind of do you have criteria that you think about or Okay, so remember when I said it started because I got whiny that people weren't coming to Florida? <laughs> this is all about me. <laughs> so, so basically, I invite people that I want to see. And that sounds super ridiculous and completely self-centered. But basically, the way that it works is if, it, if, if an author excites me, if I would want to read their books, if... Um, if they're super friendly on social media and their books look great and I think they'll fit in with our group, then I'm going to invite them. If, if they are um, interactive and they're offering something new and fresh and maybe something I haven't read yet but looks cool, you know, then that's – it's basically my wish list, my personal authors that I would love to meet. And I have invited the, some of the same authors every year for seven years, and they never respond to me. But I still do it anyway because I hope one of these days they're going to say yes. <laughs> um, so my, my wish list, um, recommendations from people when they fill out the feedback forms, uh, authors and readers when they come after we – excuse me, after we get home, I send out a feedback form. And one of the things on there is who would you like to see? Um, so definitely those recommendations um, fi filter into it. Um, authors email me all year long, um, and I actually will go to their website. I'll look at their books. I'll look at their social media, um, all of that. Not because, you know, I'm necessarily trying to exclude anyone, but what I'm trying to do is keep um, a dynamic, cohesive group that I think will work well together, that I think will complement each other, um, that I think will keep people excited and interested, um, and that will kind of give everybody a, a, a wide variety of things to look forward to. Um, I like having um, really huge, um, big name authors, but I also like having um, debut authors that just have a really interesting first book. You know, I have quite a few authors that come that live locally. I've got some that, that come from Canada. Um, we have YA authors. We have um, erotica authors. We have LGBT authors. We've got own voices authors. We've got so many different variety of stories and storytellers um, that I really do try to um, kind of cultivate a nice group. That, that will work together and that will kind of feed off of each other and, and just really have a good time. 
Mm-hmm. The the author so list. So I'm very picky. <laughs> <laughs> the author list is is pretty awesome. Just seeing the the cross section that's there, and then splitting up between these three uh, genres that you look at that are kind of interconnected, but also kind of separate. Yeah. Well, Old City New Blood was all urban fantasy and paranormal romance. Our first year, that's all we had. Um, second year was mostly just that still. Um, and a lot of people, when they think of coastal magic, they think urban fantasy and paranormal romance. That's that's all that we will ever be in their head. Um, what I discovered um, going into, I think it was year three, um, is that a lot of authors write in multiple genres. Well, I knew that, but one of the things that became more apparent um, as far as the convention was was going is that authors that write in multiple genres, it's not realistic to say, come and promote this urban fantasy that you have, but let's not talk about this romance you have over here. That just didn't make any sense. Um, So bringing in authors that spread that focus was really a cool cool move. a lot of it actually came when we um, we had the Thousand and One Dark Nights authors with us for a couple of years before they got to be, you know, massively popular and everybody wanted them at every event. Um, so that was that was nice. And that helped us a lot. We we expanded a lot, um, a lot due to their their author roster. Um, and, it, and it worked out really well. Our readers are very enthusiastic. They read so much in so many variety of genre that it really does make sense to have a lot of things there for people to see. Um, there's, there's questions, there's panels that we can have, um, with authors that write in so many different genres. It's not specific. Um, so, so the crossover just is automatically there. It doesn't make any sense to not have it. Um, so, so that's kind of how we, how we roll Uh, magical realism is is something mm. I've loved for a long time. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to get more authors that write that. Cozy Mysteries is a new thing for me. I've started liking Cozy Mysteries a lot lately. Um, so we've got a couple of authors that write Cozy Mysteries coming now. Basically, like I said, basically if it's something I think I would enjoy, I'm going to try to get it at the convention and hopefully everybody will follow along with me. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, we'll, keep, we'll keep expanding um, – as long as the readers are finding interest in it, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the way that you curate the lineup is pretty, pretty unique and, and pretty special. And and like you said, I, I think the the people who attend are, are you know voting with their attendance. If it ain't broke, don't fix like it, Jennifer. So. <laughs> I would like to think so. And I've had people tell us that we should have open signups, and I I see the benefit to that mm. um, in some respects, but it's just not the way that I would want to do my event. And it, for People that do it that way, that's great. It works for them. That's fantastic. It's just not not something I'd be comfortable with. Mm-hmm. And I think it says a lot that, that you do take the time to curate it. Because you could do open and just like, here are 50 slots. Yeah. Go fill them up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But there's a little something, I think, to, to, as, to what Will said about people know it's your curation. And if they like mm-hmm. your curation, they're going to trust in the new folks and genres right. that you're kind of bringing in. I would like to think so. I would like to think so. Now, as we mentioned earlier, um, 2019 is going to be the seventh year of the convention. Mm -hmm. Is there any one favorite thing that you get to do every year that you're like, you know, rubbing your hands together going, yay, I get to do this again. Um, Is there one specific, because putting together a convention is really hard work, but is there like one thing that you're like really jazzed about every single year? Um, I don't know. I just like, I like seeing everybody. I'm, I like to people watch, so I like seeing everybody. Like mm-hmm. I like meeting the new authors. I like seeing them interact. I like seeing um, the people, you know, hanging out with each other. Um, I love scavenger hunts, like I said earlier. So <laughs> I like to get involved in doing that kind of thing. Um, I don't know. I kind of like it all. Like I said, I would love to moderate every single panel. <laughs> I would love to go to every meet and greet. Um, I kind of, I, I kind of shoot myself in the foot because I want to do everything. And of course, you cannot unless somebody has a time turner tucked away somewhere. And then, if that's the case, we need to talk. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that out there? If you have a time turner, get in touch with Jennifer. <laughs> now you've 
come with a pretty awesome giveaway for our listeners. Uh, tell everybody what you've got. Well, I think that somebody should get a free registration for Coastal Magic. So that will be uh, one person that can come to um, Daytona in February. Now, I'm not able to pay for transportation or hotel, but I can definitely um, get you in for free. Yeah, and of course, the hotel has uh, a discount with it, so that Mm -hmm. does help there just a little bit. Absolutely. Um, So you created a hashtag called Mm -hmm. Win My Way In CMCon19. Mm-hmm. Now, for those of you listening, don't freak out that you didn't get what that was because mm-hmm. we're going to put that in the show notes. But you can use that hashtag and then follow Coastal on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, any or all, and uh, make posts up to one post per day per platform and uh, let Jennifer know why you'd like to win, what's exciting about going to Coastal Magic, et cetera. And then she's going to pluck one winner out from all that uh, (laughs) at the end of the day, July 15th. Right. Just um, make sure you're using the hashtag, and then I'll check Twitter, I'll um, check Facebook, I'll check Instagram, I'll look at all of them. Um, You can do, um, like Jeff said, one one a day per platform, so you get three chances every day. Um, And... What have we got from now till then is what, like 12 days, 13 days, something well, like that? Well, seven days between the time this podcast drops on Monday, July 9th through uh, Sunday, July 15th. So seven days people gotcha. have to do this. So that's up to uh, seven times three is <laughs> 21. <laughs> yes. Do it the math Yay, really math. quick. Uh, Yay, 21 math. chances to enter, which is pretty awesome. And we, we, I know you're looking for creativity in those entries. Yep, absolutely. If there's an author that you're excited to see, let me know about it. If you've never been to Florida, let me know about it. Um, if this will be your seventh time coming, uh, let me know about it. Whatever whatever you're excited about, put that in your tweet. Um, it's going to do two things. One, it's going to enter you in. And two, I'm hoping that your excitement will be contagious. So um, maybe we can maybe we can get all your friends to come along too. Yeah, absolutely. And even better, if you're already registered for Coastal, you can still register to win this prize because Jennifer is going to be kind enough to refund your registration if you have already registered in these opening days that registration's open. That's true. If the winner has already registered, then we'll do a refund for that, that cost for you. So don't necessarily wait to register just for the contest. Go ahead and register and then enter the contest and we'll get you your money back if you win. Yeah, so that's that's super exciting. So look for the look for the hash in the show notes, so you can cut and paste it correctly, and uh, we'll be announcing the winner back here on the podcast uh, in episode one forty six on July twenty third. And whoever the winner is, we look forward to seeing them too. Yes, that'll be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah. It'll so be. thank you for offering that up, and and for the people who are going to want to do all things coastal magic, what's the best way to keep up with everything online? Um, okay, so let's see. If you are a social media person, we have the Facebook page, the likable page. Um, that's where you're going to find kind of info and updates, kind of all the official stuff. Um, author promo will be on there. So if any of our featured authors have new books out or anything like that, you can follow all of that there. We have a Facebook group um, that you can request to join. And that's where we do kind of more of the fun social stuff. Um, We do chats on there. We'll do questions and everybody will answer questions. Um, Some of the times the authors will come on and interact with super fun. Um, Just like random goofy stuff. Um, We'll also have info and updates on there as well. Um, And it's basically anything Coastal Magic related. Um, Book related will happen there. We don't do author promo in the group. That's for the page. So if you um, are one of those people that doesn't like to join groups because of all the promo, that's not one of the things that happens in our group. Um, So there's that. Um, And then um, I believe all of the links will be on your on your show notes. So so you can click on that. Um, We've also got Twitter, of course, and Instagram, which will update as well. um, If those are your preferred social media platforms. Um, if you don't do social media and you'd rather just follow the blog, all of the blog has all of the um, all of the information, all of the updates, um, and that's just at the coastalmagicconvention.com uh, blog. You have an opportunity to subscribe um, via email or via the WordPress 
um, blog reader. So if you don't do social media, you can just follow the blog. If you like social media, then you have options as well. Cool. And we should mention too that we're a featured blogger, so we'll be hosting uh, several of the uh, featured authors between Correct. now and February. But there's a network of bloggers out there too who will also be featuring exactly. until uh, the end of the until the con actually happens in February. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of stuff to be following on those there, as well. There is, and if you plan on coming to the convention. Um, we have a reader challenge that we do every year where um, it actually the information for that will be posted on our social media and the blog this week um, where you can read books from our featured authors and depending on how many books you've read or how many authors you've read you can win prizes that you get to pick up at the convention so so that's fun so yeah. if that's if you like reading challenges we got one of those Fantastic. We'll link to that blog post as well when that comes out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jennifer, thank you so much for coming by and telling us all about Coastal. We look forward to no seeing problem. you and everybody in Daytona in February. Well, thank you very much for having me. I'll be excited to see you guys. Thanks again to Jennifer for coming to talk to us and explain a little bit about what Coastal Magic is all about. As you can tell from the interview, we are stoked, so amazingly excited to get to go to this convention in February. Absolutely. So to rehash the giveaway one more time so you know what's going on, uh, over the next seven days through Sunday, July 15th, you can use the hashtag WinMyWayIn. CM Con 19 to post to Instagram, Facebook, or to, and or Twitter uh, to gain some entries. Uh, Jennifer wants to hear from you why you're excited to go to Coastal Magic, why you're excited to win, and the winner will get a free Coastal Magic registration worth $100. Uh, there are details in the show notes at the bottom of the show notes with some more of the rules. You can also go there to cut and paste the hashtag so you don't have to remember exactly what I just said. Uh, so give a look at that and uh, we will have the uh, winner in the July 23 episode, which will be 146. Good luck to everyone uh, to get that. And we look forward to meeting you, the winner, in Coastal Magic in February. Mm-hmm. So that'll do it for this week's show. Mm -hmm. Coming up in episode 145, Lisa is back and she's going to join us with some book recommendations for your summer TBR. Um, as if... <laughs> as if it needs which, to be longer, right? Uh, that's assuming you need more books in your TBR, uh, which most of us probably don't need, but... Uh, you could never have too many. <laughs> Tune in for more recommendations <laughs> next time. So guys, remember, no matter where life takes you, the journey will always be sweeter when you have a book. Until next week, everyone, please keep turning those pages and keep reading. For detailed show notes and the complete episode backlist, go to BigGayFictionPodcast.com. New episodes are available every Monday on all major podcast distributors and YouTube. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. 